world has collapsed and portals are now put in their place. In fact, you are a leader traveling with a race of people attempting to get to the city of Talos, the last great bastion of the world. And others are as well. If you can make it there before anybody else and claim victory in that city, you will win the game in one of many scenarios in the game. It plays two to four players, takes about three hours to play, and is for ages 14 and up. Are you ready to take a look at this incredible tactical placement game that also involves moving around a board and controlling your populace as well as casting spells utilizing your mana. Let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you all the components in the game, basic idea of how a round works, and then we'll come up and I'll discuss how to play and whether or not you should pick it up. So here is Talos Collapse and everything that comes in the game for up to four players. There's quite a lot, but we're gonna go through it one by one. And then after that, we'll go down and I will show you how a round works. So let's just start from the bottom right and we'll move up. These here are tokens that will indicate your character's health when we're playing during the tactical phase. There are these armor tokens, which will allow your characters, if you're lucky enough, to gain armor and place them on a character. This is an example. He has no armor, but when you give him one of these, he gets plus one. You have these exhaustion tokens or effect tokens that you can place on characters after they've been utilized. You're going to get certain abilities that will let you move the board as a compass and other useful things for different specific abilities. There are these tiles here. One's twos and threes which display the level of difficulty when dealing with enemies in the area as well as the different areas you're going to venture through which are on these cards which I will explain in a bit. You're going to set up the scenario based on the number of players based on the scenario you choose which in this case we have the basic scenario which is called Talos. Over here are the four different races and their leaders and you can go ahead and choose one of them in the game. They all have their own color as well as their own decks and their own capital which are going to place in certain areas based on the scenario based on the number of players. There are the two types of mana, as well as the larger crystals here, which count as five mana, as well as some unique aspects like these walls here that you can add throughout the game, placing them in certain areas, and player boards based on the number of players is how many boards are going to come out, and you're always going to place player boards between players. So in a two-player game, you'll have one on each side. There are miniatures here to show you what the characters can look like in miniature form, as well as, of course, the wooden standees, which look nice as well. There's additional cards like the totem card cards and mercenary cards and underworld cards which will be utilized in certain areas in the game but most of the time we'll just set them aside. This is all the character creation stuff we'll be utilizing such as your class cards, your skill cards, a die that will basically allow you to roll it depending on what adventure you're taking part in and how many units you'll have to fight. There's certain skills and abilities that you can gain throughout the game and there's two different ranks, one and two, and when you gain them you'll take these little clip markers and indicate which one of these different abilities you have selected. They have a front and a backside as well. There's of course additional cards that will provide you with certain items and bonuses and benefits as well as these dials over here and these dials are really interesting because on these dials here you're going to have the round marker which will indicate what round the game is on and it goes up to 10 and you just click the top portion here. You're also going to have your currency, which is depicted from 1 to 10, and you're going to go ahead and move it along like this. This will give you mana throughout the game. There's the three different traits in the game that you can basically push yourself over to, whether it be the good side, whether it be the jealous side, or whether it be the evil side, or selfish side, and the evil side here. And they rank up to 6. 5 and 6 is perfect in that stat, and if you can acquire that, that is a primary, uh, primary alignment that you will be in throughout the game. Every single player will get one of these. These are the god area placement tiles and there's a certain amount of them and you basically will be able to choose them throughout the game and uh, if your alignment is correct you'll be able to keep them but otherwise you can lose them. They have specific abilities that they can grant you as well as of course you can choose to pray to them which will give you some kind of benefit as well. Player aids. There are four of them, one for each player, and they have a front and back. The front is going to indicate how to play the game, as well as the two charts, when you're building things and when you're fighting. And on the other side of the player board is basically a bunch of the symbology in the game, in which you'll be utilizing whenever you see a symbol that you don't know. And like I showed you before, this is the basic scenario card. The scenario card is going to indicate the number of players, how you're going to build the tile area, as well as what the setup is and what the adventure is going to uh, have you do, specifically this one, heading to Talos and controlling the main city at the end of the world. These are the four different race decks. You'll be able to choose one of these at the beginning of the game. 
game and they're going to have specific monsters and characters, different humans, and depending on what you're choosing, uh, giving, granting you specific characters to basically have you go through the world and acquire your end goal. These, all of these here are all the different adventures you're going to go on. And it has a little bit of a choose your own adventure feel because when you end up flipping over a tile on the board, maybe it's gonna take you to the realm of the living. Another player is gonna pick up one of these cards from one of these decks based on where you landed, read the story, allow you to choose one of the three outcomes and then determine what happened based on the outcome you chose. Most likely you're going to be fighting a battle if it's not the first round of the game. And it'll be uh, indicated based on rolling a die uh, and determining how you're gonna be fighting on these boards here against the wilds, the scary creatures that will pop out based on each of these decks. Each of these decks has their own choose your own adventure cards as well as the monsters underneath them that you can go ahead and utilize. There's basic monsters and elite monsters as well. And on the cards here, we'll basically say what happens in the battle as well as what you can gain when you, if you defeat the specific area. And that is pretty much what you get in the game. Of course, there's extra player boards, which I don't have out because currently we're going to be showing you just a two-player setup as well as a round and how it would work for a two-player game. But this is Talos Collapse. In a nutshell, let's go ahead and take it down below. I'll give you an idea of how a round goes and then we'll come up and I'll tell you what I think about the game. So here is Talos Collapse set up for two players. I squished it together though so you can see pretty much everything. I took out the other two characters, the other two player boards, the other two dials here, as well as all of the uh, cards that you can utilize, the player reference cards here, as well as some other little bits and pieces, including these miniatures, which can come in the game. I'm not sure which one's gonna come in, whether it's the wood or the miniatures. It'll probably be based on the budget would be my guess. But we're going to start by picking a scenario. And the first scenario we have is the basic scenario called Talos. It tells us how you set the game up based on the number of players, and in this case is a two-player game. This is two, three, and then four. So here you see our two-player board here. It tells us also on the back how to set it up for this specific basic scenario, and of course the lore for it. After that you can go ahead and set it aside. Remember the way to win the game is going to be on the back here, and every single scenario is going to be different. This specific one is going to be trying to accomplish the goal of getting to Talos and controlling it by defeating the current inhabitants as well as anybody that might arrive there as well. After you've selected your scenario and set it up for that number of players in that scenario, then you're going to place a board in between each player. So in this case, you'll set two boards down for each player, or one for each player on each side. And then you're going to choose a default leader or custom leader. There are default leaders in the rule book. So if you take this rule book here, you can go ahead and look through it, find the default customization settings and choose those. Or if you want, you can customize your own. And I'll go ahead and actually describe how to do that. The first thing you'll do is take and divide skill cards. These are the skill cards in the game and based on the number of players is how many you divide out equally and of course after you've done that we'll just go ahead and say that I did that by randomly selecting them here just like this uh, then after that each player is going to choose to either pass on the cards they have or keep them if they pass they're going to move their cards aside and get to do it later but they'll get better and more types of cards and more choices however they're going to not get to choose the specific leader class type they would like but if you didn't choose to pass, so if nobody chose to pass and nobody chose to keep, it's pretty simple how it works. You're going to take the stack that you have, and then you're going to utilize your five CP. And each one of these cards has a cost on it. It's in the top left-hand corner. It gives you a passive active ability, and you're going to spend your points and gain these cards. One might be powerful, or maybe naked, or organized, or confident, and they're all different. And based on how you set them up is how they're, what your character is going to function throughout the game, as well as your class. So after you spent your five points, let's just go ahead and say, I spent these two, you may actually have one or two points left over that you may not wish to spend, in which case you can actually go ahead and utilize that additional CP to give yourself points in these three different traits, whether it be uh, good or evil or otherwise. And all you gotta do is mark these things up by pushing it up one or even two points. You can only ever have two of these specific alignments at any point in time. And if at any point in time you go to the five or six track marker, all the rest of them that you may have. So for instance, if this was at three and this one goes to from four to five this is going to go down and you're only going to have control of this specific one which would probably be good here but nevertheless if you had one extra point you just move this up by one and everybody else would do that as well in player turn order as well you're going to be selecting one of these different types of classes and you're going to go ahead and either choose a medic or maybe a strategist or a archmage or a pathfinder and they're all going to have their own abilities as well as an initiative marker which is going to be taken place for so it's going to be relevant in certain issues such as like turn order I believe. Uh, set aside the rest of these after you've gone ahead and made your character as well as your races and after everybody's done that you won't need these anymore for the rest of the game. 
then you're going to go ahead and choose a race. And there are four different races, and I've already went ahead and picked two. There is this one here, which is the, uh, this, these are the Supremes. And these ones over here are the, let's see here, these ones are the Morags. There's two other ones, there's the Humans, and I think there's the Ascended. And basically, you can go ahead and uh, take that deck and then select a capital. And there's two different types of capitals you can have. One type of capital is going to be like this here, which is your castle, and the other type is going to be your mage tower. I gave each different base, each different race a different type, as well as, of course, you're gonna be starting with a two as opposed to a one, and they have a double side to them. After you've gone ahead and done that, as well as placed your capital where it tells you to in the scenario, place your character on top of that capital, you're then going to get specific units based on what you chose. If you chose a castle, you're going to get a level one archer and a level one warrior, as well as you're going to get a level two archer and a level two warrior. If you chose a mage tower, you would get two level one mages, which are over here, as well as a level two mage. And you're also gonna get three unimana. The unimana is these yellow ones here, which will be used for spells. And the blue ones are just basic mana, which will be used for building. After you've got your castle and or your mage tower, you're then going to make sure your characters are all placed down and your setup is complete. Now, go ahead and start the round by setting the round. So, at the beginning of every round, you will either start this at 1, or you're going to nick it over to 2, 3, 4, and 5. So, there's a total of potentially 10 rounds in the game. You're then going to go ahead and set your income. And this right here is your income marker. And I've already went ahead and set it for 2, because your income is based on your capital level plus 1 for every building you may have on the board. After you've set your income, heal any and all units that are wounded by one. Your unit's wounds are going to be based on their level, and they have ones, twos, and threes, so at any point if a level one is wounded and at this phase you give them a heal, that will basically bring them back into your recruitment area or the area in which you're going to have your reinforcements, and you'll be able to utilize them instantly. If not, it might take two or even three rounds to bring a fully wounded unit back into uh, your deployment area. Next is the development phase, in which you can take place in building. You can build a level 1 building uh, by placing it to an adjacent or cleared area. Or you can choose to upgrade a previously placed building by upgrading from a 2 to even a 3, and a 3 to even a 4. And you can go ahead and check your player reference. There's a chart down here at the bottom that tells you how much it costs based on the level for whether it's a mage tower or a castle. So for instance, if I have a level 1 castle and I want to upgrade to a level 2, it would cost me 5 and that's just basically how you would use that chart. It's pretty simple how that works. If you don't want to build or don't want to upgrade, you can do one of the, or either or, then you can move on to the Mysterium phase, the, the mysticism phase, in which you're going to be able to choose or change a god. These here are the different gods in the game, and you can go ahead and pick one of these guys during this phase, but you must have at least one point in that god's specific type. So if you want the good god, you have to have at least one point in the good area. If you want evil, same idea. There's also a neutral god that you can go ahead and choose from. In addition, you could also choose to pray to the god, and each god has a prayer ability at the top that will cost you something and give you something in return. These gods also have special abilities that can take place during the game. After you've done that, you can go ahead and move on to the movement phase. Oh, there's also converting mana in that phase, too. You can convert mana uh, equal to unimana based on how many wizards you have in their the, the wizard areas here, mage areas here, and their, their level. Movement is next. Movement allows you to move one to two spaces, as long as it's on an open area. So for instance, if the board looks something like this, something like that, then you can go ahead and move two spaces, one and two. That's one option. The other option is you can invade, and you can move one space into an adjacent area and invade that space and flip it over and you'll take part in an adventure. There's a couple other little things that involve movement. One is you can never move into a, uh, from a black area into an empty space, and you can never move into a, from a black area into another black area. The whites basically, basically are portals. So in this case, there's two blacks. There's no portals here, which means you can't move through it. But if there were a white on either side, so in this case, there's a white on this one, then you can move through, and vice versa. 
And that's pretty much the only rule. So there's a white here you can move into here. So you can either invade or move two spaces on empty open areas. After you've moved and everybody else has moved, then there's the adventure phase. And the adventure phase is pretty simple. So for instance, if I start my first round and I want to flip over here and move into here, I'm now going to be adventuring into this specific area. And the way you're going to determine what area that is, is you're going to look at the back of the cards here. And this is the lowland area. And you're going to give this card, the top card of the deck, to the player player on your left and that player is going to read this adventure for you which is a choose your own adventure of types in this case here it says something along the lines of upon seeing you a barely breathing jagirian suddenly char charges at you with a magical blade and a booming war cry and you can do one of three things you can either seize and impale him on a pike immobilize the attacker with a spell or knock him out and take the blade whatever one you choose will show up on the back and give you some type of ability or thing you have to deal with and of course there is two different aspects other than just what the story has entailed for you one is what happens in a battle and the other is what reward you get for completing that battle and in the first round of play you're not actually going to take place a battle but every round after that every other round after that you're going to actually involve a battle and battle works works pretty simply you're going to go ahead and look at the chart once again you're going to go ahead and decide what type of realm it is whether it's one two or a three you're going to take this die here and you're going to roll so for instance if we're dealing with a low land realm and we chose the first option we're going to move up our evil track because this is one of the three options that you can move up so you would take this track here you move it up by one which would be your evil track, then you're going to go ahead and roll the die. Now, in this case here, this is a six. You would actually give that die plus two. So you're going to check your, your, your marker here, which is one, go to six plus two, six is the highest, and then it's going to tell you what you're going to be fighting. So it's going to be four basic units of this type and one elite, as well as five mana for your reward if you're successful. You're going to go ahead and then grab this deck here, go to the back, find the basic units and elites, shuffle them up and deal out the number based on this little chart here, and place it on this board. The other player will do the same. That's why there's two different boards here. So let's go ahead and just show you what it's going to look like for a battle. So for instance, this one said we had four of the basic level ones and then an elite, which is a level two. So there's a level two, and then here's four random level ones. Go ahead and set these aside. These are basically what you're going to be fighting with, right? Fighting against. I would be this player here, and these are my three units I started out with. Uh, I get to go ahead and place my units first. I'll place them on any of these six areas here. And then after that, the opponent, my opponent on my left, is going to be placing the AI. And you can go ahead and check certain things about these guys here. There could be mages, which are these little swirls. There are archers, which are going to have arrows. And then there's swords for warriors. They are then going to place these on the grid here, just like this. And after that's placed down, and the, everybody else has done the same thing on their board, so if you were over here, you'd place yours, and of course I'd place your bad guys. Then we're going to take part in this tactics phase, in which you're going to be basically putting down effect markers. I got my own effect markers on these guys here, which indicates that they haven't been utilized. And when you do utilize them, you just flip this over. So I'll go ahead and go first. I can first do something which is called a maneuver, allowing me to move into certain zones. And then I'd be able to attack. And based on what type of unit it is, is how you're going to attack. So for instance, these are all mages. And mages can shoot all the way across the board, past other units, as well as in the occupying adjacent zones as well. So in this case here, he can hit all these, as well as all these here. So any of those three guys. This guy here is a mage, and he can hit all of them. And he can hit these guys here. And archers work the same way. The only difference is if there was a warrior, for instance. Let's go ahead and grab a warrior and just say there was one. This guy here. He's only going to be able to hit the frontline unit, so he can go ahead and hit this one here, and he can hit these two here, but because these two are blocking these two, he can't hit those. That's how that works. Then, after that, you've got your idea of how you can attack. You can go ahead and choose to attack. So, for instance, if I was like this, I can then make my maneuver, and now I can attack. And the way attacking works is very, very simple. You're going to first go ahead and look at your attack points, which are over here. You're then going to assess which target you want to hit based on what you can hit. And then you're going to assign damage based on your opponent's armor. So in this case, if I wanted to hit this guy here, he's got an armor of four. So I'm going to look at my four track here, and that says two. I can then do two damage to him and place two points of damage on this character here, in which case I've used this ability. Every character also has passive and active abilities. These are all different depending on the character, and you'll have to read them and look at your chart to see what they all do. But the idea is pretty simple. If you can get somebody down to zero HP, that unit is going to pass away. And of course, after you've utilized all of your units and so has the bad guy, that will end the round for you, in which case you can choose to retreat 
or you can choose to continue this battle on the next round of play. After you do this and everybody else does this in player order, you're then going to go back to the setup area, the, the, the starting area, starting phase, set the round timer, get your income, heal all your guys, and continue to do your deployment and movement and whatnot. If you're still in battle, however, you're going to ignore steps uh, three and four, which is your movement and your adventure, and just go simply straight into the battle after everybody has done that. Rinse and repeat until you guys get to Talos. And when you get to Talos, it's going to be a battle royale. There's a Talos deck, which has actually got units set aside, which are these guys here. It's going to be a specific type of army you're going to need to fight. And if you can defeat that army as well as anybody that's in that space, you're going to win the game of Talos Collapse. Quite a lot, but pretty simple if you take it all in stride. Let's come up and talk about it. Talos Collapse is a beast of a game. For those of you who like games like Twilight Imperium and Scythe and uh, things like Lisboa, this is probably going to be in your wheelhouse because it's got a lot of moving parts. And actually what's interesting about this game too is it has two separate games that influence each other and work together. First of all, you've got the world building aspect where you're moving your leader around, you're trying to gather mage towers as well as castles, you're building your army, you're gathering mana, asking from help for the gods as well as gathering new skills and utilizing all the passive that you started the game with which also includes creating your own leader or if you don't want to do that you can just simply go ahead and use one of their defaults the other aspect of the game uh, the separate game would be the fact that you are doing a tactical game utilizing the cards and the boards maneuvering attacking and then resting your units and hopefully winning those battles and both of them play really well actually it just so happens that the game does take quite a bit of time each round is going to progress rather slowly due to the fact that you're going to have to do the first phase for each player as well as the second phase involving the battling. And sometimes you're going to skip your third and fourth phases, which is going to be the movement and the adventure step, because you're going to be in a battle, which is fine. There's also an adventure phase too, which is interesting. It has a little bit of a choose your adventure, which adds a little bit to the plot, a little bit to the theme, but not enough to take you away and out of the game. Uh, so you're going to be able to ask yourself questions like your secretary informs you that he has found found a treacherous spy among your people. You want to show him mercy and let him go? Exile him or not to expose, uh, do not expose him and feed him information. So you can kind of choose how you want to do that. And your stats are going to increase. And that's going to be utilizing this nifty little dial here, whether it's going to be the, uh, the this little crow or the sun or the evil one, right? And moving these things along. This thing is really cool, actually. The fact that it keeps track of the rounds, it keeps track of your income and your different uh, types. <laughs> it reminds me of the whole was it Star Wars where you're Knights of the Re Knights of the Old Republic where you're gonna gain stats in either the dark side of the force or the good or the light side of the force this does the same thing as well as allowing you to spend points in those tracks here by moving this little dial along and that's gonna give you additional class skills and whatnot which is really cool the way they add that with it it adds a little bit of theme to it as well as adds theme to your leader and then of course the choose your adventure adds theme to your entire race and they're both implemented together uh, when you're moving across the board especially in a two-player game you're going to want to tread carefully you can't push your way straight to talos really quickly you want to make sure that you've farmed up it feels kind of like final fantasy in the sense that you want to make sure in pokemon the way you want to basically increase the value of your army and make sure you're able to topple those second and third stages getting through the lowland realms might not be so difficult but if you push too fast you're definitely going to be in for some trouble some power creep is going to hit you really hard and other players are going to wish it by you so make sure that you're meticulous in how you choose to move along uh additionally from that utilizing the gods and their powers is really unique and interesting and the fact that you can gain favor with the gods and ultimately not gain control of them but make sure that they only will listen to you because you have gained that uh, array of of you you've worked with their divinity enough to where they're like okay i like you i like you so you're going to be working with me the artwork in the game is spectacular i really like the artwork for this game and i think most of you guys who like some really detailed really nice artwork but of course also very dark they're going to enjoy that as well this is definitely not a kids game this is going to be for an older adult maybe even i'd say like late teens to older adults playing this game picture that Twilight Imperium crowd, it's going to hit those people really rather well. As well as, of course, the fact that all the components are very nice. You've got miniatures, which are really nice and detailed. They should be one of those. The tiles are very nice and thick, and although all of this is a prototype, it looks great. Even the wooden pieces here look amazing, and I would be just as happy to utilize these as opposed to the miniatures. And the fact that you're going to be either building mage capitals or just the basic uh, castle capitals, which will allow you to grow and grow and grow and become more powerful. 
it has a lot of stat tokens and whatnot there's just a lot of stuff everywhere but in reality it's rather quite simple as you go from step by step and as long as you have one person that understands how to play the game everybody else is going to rather fall in suit pretty quickly overall this is a fun game and i'd say the negatives involved were be it is longer so there's gonna be a certain audience for that as well as the fact that you need to be meticulous and there's a lot of moving parts so if you forget something along the way or don't do something specifically it might cost you a little bit in the following rounds so uh, i guess the highly intelligent gamers are going to do a little bit better than people like me who can't really concentrate on just every little thing that's going on and of course making sure you utilize all your abilities on all the characters for all the different cards you have it has a lot of that going on for it as well i would definitely recommend this game for you deep strategy gamers you guys who like tactical games mixed in with a big massive game and for those of you who just like to have a good time talos collapse i really enjoyed this game and i think it plays even better with three and four, four players the more you can get to this game the better but of course the longer as well decide if you want to pick up this game which will be on kickstarter down below in the description go ahead and tell me what you think about the game let me know what uh, you, if you thought this review was helpful and whatnot and i look forward to seeing you in the outro which happens right now all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review if you like this video check out the rest of our videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment as well as to our website unfilteredgamer.com tons of blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more we're giving away game gels for fun right now as well as elementos so go ahead and get that site if you want to hit some up as well as of course our live stream every wednesday 7 30 p.m pst we are doing giveaways and fun prizes as well as showing you games just like this one down below we play those live and it's a lot of fun join the community if you're interested thank you guys so much for watching and i look forward to heading to <laughs> i look forward to heading to talos first and then kicking you out and reigning supreme as the main leader of the world while you the lowly peasants reign down below me that wasn't very nice that wasn't that wasn't very nice at all